Hey, welcome back to Understanding Gradle. This time I want to talk about dependency version conflicts, which you sometimes can't avoid. We'll look at how these conflicts come to be, what Gradle does with them, and how you can influence that. We'll also take a look at consistent resolution, which will help you to avoid surprises with dependency conflicts and their resolution. But let's jump into our example to understand what a dependency version conflict is. I've now added two dependencies to our example project a dependency to commons lang in our business logic and a dependency to commons text in our application project. The versions of these constraints are defined in a central place. For simplicity, I choose dependency constraints in our convention plugin. You can check out the previous video for other options to define dependency versions in a central place. Now, if we ask Gradle to show us a runtime class path of our application, which is the resolve dependencies, so the version Gradle chooses in the end, we can see that two versions of commons lang are in here. There is 3.6 and 3.7 also define 3.6 in our constraints. This happened because commons text, which is out of our control because it's an external library, also defined a dependency to commons lang and choose version 3.7. So now there's a conflict between version 3.6 and 3.7 and Gradle can only choose one of them. So versions which are defined in the simple notation in the metadata of commons text or in our constraints are called required versions by Gradle. If there are multiple required versions in the dependency graph, there is a simple rule how Gradle resolves these conflicts, which is the higher version wins. So in this case, Gradle takes 3.7 because it's higher than 3.6. This is kind of a best guess approach. The assumption is that the higher version is mostly backward compatible and so if there is a conflict everyone can agree that the highest version is that what most likely will work. Of course there can be problems caused by this but you can't avoid this. If you want to use external libraries that depend on some other library and you have multiple things depending on this other library you may run into conflicts so in many cases greater standard resolution of just picking the higher versions may just work for you. But there are a lot of sneaky issues that you might encounter. Let's look at one example. Let's look at the service we implemented in our business logic project. Here we use the numberutils.isCreatable methods from commonslang. This method checks if a string can be transformed into a number. But for some reason, if the number represented by the string has leading zeros, it's not recognized as a number. So let's just assume that we use this functionality for some reason. For demonstration purposes, we just print the information that there are no leading zeros. We also have a test written for this, which passes. And if we run our application, which uses the service, we also see the information that there are no leading zeros is not printed when we have a number, which actually has leading zeros. So now at a later point, we increase the version number of commons text from 1.4 to 1.5. Everything seems to work. Our test is still passing. But if we run our application, Suddenly, the behavior has changed. It's not recognized anymore that this number has leading zeros. How did that happen? If we look at the dependency graph for application now, we can see that the version of commons lang has changed. It is now 3.8.1, because the newer version of commons text depends on a newer version of commons lang. And because it's higher than the version we defined, it's the version Gradle picks. Now, in the release notes of commons lang, we can see that there's a bug fix that number utils is creatable has been fixed so that it also recognizes numbers with leading zeros as numbers. So the behavior we relied on in commons lang was a bug. But for us in this case, this was a feature. And without us actively changing anything on the commons lang version, we suddenly got the bug fix in, which broke the behavior in our code. And even worse, our test didn't even recognize it. So how did that happen? Well, to understand that, we can have a look at the test runtime class path of our business logic project where the test runs. If we look at that, we see that there actually is no version conflict at all and Gradle just picks version 3.6 from our constraints. And this is because commons text is not a dependency of our business logic project. It only comes in later in our application project. But since, as I said a few times already, in the end everything is put together to run the application, we then get the conflict at application runtime and then we get a different version than the one we used to compile and test our business logic library. 
This is really an issue, which often goes unnoticed for years, and then suddenly some dependency update leads to some very weird behavior. That's why Grail recently added a feature called Consistent Resolution, which can help you with this problem. So always when you modularize software, you have this trade-off between isolating something completely, taking it out of its context, or keeping a certain context around so that things are consistent. In this case, we separate the application code, which puts all services together to a functional application from the implementation of the different services. So if we now test the service in isolation, it doesn't know which other things might come in through other services or the application code or whatever else is added into the application. But because we have this restriction that only one version of a certain library can be used, we have the issue that we can't just combine things arbitrarily without an effect. Because if different things use different versions of the same library, in the end we will get a conflict and only one version will be picked. So that indicates that we did too much separation. We lost too much context when we took services completely out of the context of the application. The consistent resolution feature of Gradle can help us here to get the missing context back. So the idea of consistent resolution is that Gradle uses additional constraints when resolving dependencies. These constraints can represent all the library versions that will be used when everything is put together in the final application. Consistent resolution is activated on the configurations that are used for resolving the dependencies. In the Java world, these configurations are, in the default setup, runtime class pass, compile class pass, test runtime class pass, and test compile class pass. I talked about that in more detail in the declaring dependencies video. So now, for all these configurations, we say that they should consistently resolve with the application runtime class pass. So this is something where no default setup is provided by Gradle. Because, as I said before, it's a trade-off. How much context do you want to inject back into the single components or single sub-projects you have? Because, in the end, when we say our sub-projects need information about our application, we kind of introduce a cycle, right? Because the application needs the sub-projects to assemble itself, but then the sub-projects also need the application to find out all the dependency constraints it needs. But luckily, that's not a problem here. Because in dependency resolution, cycles are totally useful, which is the case here. And Gradle can deal with them. So now to get the application runtime class pass in all of our projects, we can create a new configuration that represents it. So now we have to learn a little bit about the API to create and configure your custom configurations. It takes a bit to get used to because this API has grown over time and so it's a little bit unintuitive in some places. If you wonder what the configuration concept in Gradle is at all, please check out my video about declaring dependencies. In that video, I will explain that there are different kinds of configurations. One of them is configurations for resolving dependencies, like the runtime class pass and the test runtime class pass. And now the application runtime class pass is something we also want to resolve. We express that by setting the can be resolved property to true when creating the configuration. We also have to set the can be consumed property to false, because otherwise this would be a consumable configuration, which is used for other things, as I have explained in the other video I mentioned. Then you need to set so-called attributes on configurations. The attributes identify which consumable configurations from the other projects I depend on should be chosen when I resolve. I won't go into the details here, but we'll talk about it more in one of the next videos. While basically anything could be an attribute on a configuration, they are predefined attributes that come with the Java plugins. The central attribute is the usage attribute, which you can set to Java runtime. This basically tells Gradle from all the dependencies I want the runtime representation or runtime variant, which will give us all the dependencies that end up of the runtime class pass of the different components. So once we have defined this configuration, we can use it to define dependencies as well. In this case, we only need the dependency to our application project. And now, if we for example look at the test runtime class pass of the business logic project, we can see that by additional constraints Gradle has created by resolving the application runtime class pass, we now also resolve to the 3.8.1 version of CommonSlang in the business logic project, although we never defined this version ourselves. And now, if we run the test, it actually fails and recognizes that a behavior change 
has been introduced. And now we can go and investigate what the reason is. So as a general rule, I would say it's always good to have the latest release of all libraries you are using. It would be best to actually change our own constraints to pick the latest version of Common Slang and then fix our code to work with it. So if you absolutely have to stick with an older version, you can also change the constraints you defined to a strict constraint. The short notation for this is just adding two exclamation marks at the end of the version, which we can do here in our convention plugin. And if we do that, we can see that our test passes again and that our application runs with the previous behavior. So that's what I wanted to show you for now about dependency version conflicts and consistent resolution. I think consistent resolution is a good addition to almost every project. If you want to add it to your project, you have to figure out where you get the complete dependency resolution context from. So as I have done with the application runtime class pass in this example, because by this you give enough context to Gradle that it can build and test components on their own, but still consider the larger context they will be used in later on. Unfortunately, there is no way to deal with dependency version conflicts automatically all the time. If you use a bunch of open source libraries or middleware, you most likely will get conflicts on libraries that are used by a lot of different folks. That's just a problem inherent to the ecosystem and how libraries and reuse works. So to deal with all of this as painless as possible, my suggestion is use consistent resolution. Every time you add a new dependency or upgrade a version, very closely look at the impact it will have. And of course, ideally, have automatic test coverage for all the functionality that relies on a certain behavior of a library. If you combine that with consistent resolution, your tests will tell you if you break something by a dependency update. There are other types of conflicts which are even more annoying, the so-called capability conflicts. I'll talk about that in the next video. Until then, please consider subscribing to this channel, post questions in the comments, and see you next time.